And I have to say, Neil, uh, we, because we, I've been chatting away to Ray for, for the last three days now, since I started at GB News back in December, one of the things I always wanted to do, and I said to our boss, I said, I want to meet Neil. Because I love what you did when you were walking around on the BBC all those you know, years ago. And then love what you talk about on GB News. Because you just give us a show, even though I don't agree with some of what you say, it's the fact that we can that's... agree to disagree and just listen to your thought processes. Well, that's the, that's the, be that's the beauty of it. Uh, you know, a conversation or, or a debate, by definition, has to have both sides or, or as many sides as possible mm. of the of the conversation otherwise you know otherwise you're just you're just broadcasting from some kind of party line and i think the great relief of being involved in in gb news is that yeah you get i, I watch things on gb news and you know could shout at the screen in yeah. the same way that i would shout at the screen in the face of many other you know broadcasters but that's that's entirely appropriate yeah. but we're all in one newsroom together yeah. and all those all those ideas are just bouncing off one another and that's that's, that's dynamic how it be. and that's how you come up with that's how you come up with compromises and it's how you come up with solutions mm. because you're hearing you're here and you know sometimes the solution comes from the most unexpected direction or the most unlikely source but if you're not listening to everything you miss out on the solutions and the compromises yeah. Perfectly put. Uh, look, Rafe, we're going to start with uh, the Sunday Telegraph, should we? And um, looking at... <laughs> I can't quite get my head around this. The House of Commons Library is going to be decolonised. Can you imagine this? This is, yes, this is a leaked report from the House of Commons Library about an anti-racism plan, including a diversity audit, all of this following Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, which are uniquely American problems for an American situation. George Floyd has no relevance to this country. Uh, but it's funny how libraries around the UK and around the West are doing this. I mean, what's up with librarians today? You know, when I was a kid, there were nice, sweet old ladies with glasses on a chain. Now they're radical revolutionaries leading the uh, charge for wokery. It's, it's quite bizarre. And it's just going to this wider problem of the takeover of our institutions that's been happening gradually over the past, past 25 years because they've come through the university system, they've been inculcated with things like critical race theory uh, and, and uh, gender studies and so forth, and you're seeing now, even in the heart of government, this, uh, this is taking place. And if the Conservative government can't get literally its own house in order, I don't know what effect they think they're going to have on the rest of the country in leading the charge in the culture wars. It's interesting that you say this as someone with a, a, a mixed heritage background. Yes, exactly. I mean, the reality is... Britain is not inherently racist. Britain actually ranks among the least racist countries. Northwestern Europe and South America, and every poll has been done in terms of who would you like to be living next to you, a person like yourself. These are the most tolerant countries in the world. If you want to see true racism, you go to China and see how blacks have dealt with there, or go to India and see how they, how they look at other people. We're so fortunate to be here, and this constant obsessing over race only serves to in, in, inflame the situation and increase the division between people. We should celebrate the fact that we have such a wonderfully diverse nation. I would, I would say that, that this cancer has, has reached uh, an, an institution like a library, I find almost the most sinister of all, because this is the road that leads to book burning. Mm. You know, if this way of thinking has got into something like a library, a, a library in the Commons or wherever else, then that is, that is truly troubling. Because as in, as in all things, you know, have more books, have more ideas by all means, but to go into a library and think that there would be things that you need to get rid of, I find that, I find that well, dark. Well, we don't, we don't learn and we don't develop by forgetting parts of our history, do we? No, well, you've, you've got to learn more. That's the whole point. And a, a, a library should be the richest, deepest reservoir possible of thought, by all means, broaden, broaden out the, the coverage that's available inside the library. But to go in with a mindset of thinking that something has to be undone, decolonised, that things presumably ought to be removed, I, that's sinister in the extreme. And it's worth noting that they've said that books that would normally be eliminated will be kept if they're from diverse authors or have a diverse connection. Oh. So purely based upon that tick box, they'll be kept in. But as yeah. we all know, basically... We've had a quiet revolution over the 25 years. You can have a revolution without flying red flags from the rooftops. The mm. buildings may look the same, but there are cuckoos in the nest. Yeah. Um, let's talk to something I'm quite fond of, uh, which is a cheap flight in the Mail on Sunday. Now, the, the era of cheap flights could be done and dusted, so says the Mail. 
I'll be honest and say I find it difficult to ascertain whether or not all the travel chaos is real or whether in some way it's being, I don't know, even engineered as, as part of an ongoing uh, campaign to keep everyone on edge and inconvenienced. I really don't know. However, this, the idea is there that the era of, of cheap flights is over. You know, there's a couple of generations probably have, have, have lived uh, on the assumption that you can, you know, jump on a plane, you know, get to the med or, or, get, or get to wherever, and that it's been within everyone's reach. Uh, and now, now, of course, uh, as in so many areas of life, I think we're being expected to, to live smaller lives. I think that's the reality, uh, and I find that troubling. Of course, the, the elites are going to continue to roam the world in their private jets, which are, you know, apparently infinitely more damaging to the environment anyway than, you know, the kind of domestic flights that, that you or I would make use mm -hmm. of. Uh, and I think this is um, part of the green agenda. I think it, it's, it's all part of a move to, you know, to demonise things like, you know, like flight. I think cheap flights have become like the new smoking. It'll be something that it's deemed, you know, detrimental to be, you know, to be taking advantage of. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think it's all just part of, of a push to have us accept smaller, more limited lives. Yeah. yeah. Well, doesn't that sound depressing? It Especially is, with it, the life history it, we want it to see somewhere but else. It, but, it, but it has to be resisted. You know, there's, yeah. you know, if there's, you know, Rafe mentioned a quiet revolution that's been going on, uh, there has to be, there has to be resistance to it. You know, we don't have to sit down, lie down, and uh, accept this new reality that's being handed to us. Yeah. You know, everyone with a backbone, just get up and say no. Yeah. Well, very good point. Uh, look, I can't believe how quickly the, your three appearances have whipped by this is morning. That as, is that You're as done. true? You're biffed. <laughs> but you don't have to go anywhere. Enjoy the party. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.